I just want to thank um, Sheetal. Uh, we don't know each other for a very long time, maybe a month or less than a month. And for us to connect so quickly with all the Abhinasham people, with Nipun Bhai, with Raghu, it's, uh, it's amazing, very inspiring. I didn't know so many people were doing so much work out in the world. Uh, so I feel I'm very, very blessed that you've given me this opportunity. And um, you're making my journey even more special. I never thought it was. Um, there are lots of things. I think everybody's life is a journey. And um, it's inspiring to each and every person. I just want to share a few things. The way I used to be. Um, who I am today. When I was in the 8th standard, 8th, ninth standard, I was extremely arrogant. Um, very... Um, I used to give myself a lot of importance, not care about what other people think. I think it helped me in some manners that I could step out of the box easily and I could just convince everybody that I, I want to do this is the way I want to do it. And nobody would argue because they had given up on me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was extremely arrogant um, and maybe not very grateful or humble to whatever I had, whatever I received. Uh, and then I started gardening with my dad and I shared my pomegranate plant story with you guys. And I think that plant actually made me a little more arrogant because I thought I could receive anything I wanted to from the universe if I just gave it enough positive energy and, you know, even if it was just, uh, just my stubbornness that I just wanted to do it because I wanted it that way, not because it was right or wrong. And... Uh, the more and more I started gardening and I started being with the soil and being with nature, um, things happened, plants died. I transplanted them and prayed a lot, but they still died. <laughs> and I was really disappointed in the beginning uh, that this can't be happening to me. You know, I've, I've put in a lot of work. I've talked to the plants every day. I've watered them. I've done everything right. It just can't go wrong. Um, and I think every day I saw something like that. It made me more humble. Um, it taught me that I am, I cannot control anything. Um, that there are some things that, I think most of the things that are just beyond control, it just happened. I'm just a very small channel of it. The universe will take care of whatever it wants to do and I'm just a medium through which it's doing the things. So I am not actually doing it because I want to do it. I'm doing it because somebody's making me doing it. So that was a rea realization which happened over a period of time. Uh, and I think my biggest inspiration is my dad. I don't know if I actually inspired him to sell the hospital uh, because he's been my inspiration to start farming, to live off on the land or to give up, you know, the normal way of life. When I decided that I didn't want to take a degree after my 12th standard, he was the only one in the entire family who supported my decision wholeheartedly, without any questions. Um, so I really, whatever I am today, I am because of him. Um, and he sent me to this amazing school down south in Kodai Kanal. It's called Sholai. Sholai means forest in Tamil. And uh, it's a school in 100 acres of dense forest with a river flowing through the middle of the school. And um, it's a community-based school. There are 60 residential kids with teachers, the principal. Everybody eats together. They have one kitchen. Um, it's beautiful. I learned what it is like to be in a community when I went there. I just had read a lot of books and I had lots of thoughts about this is what I want to do. But I actually started living that life when I went to show life. And when I came back to Pune a year and a half later, I couldn't adjust to the sound and the traffic and it scared me a little. So people think living in the forest is scary. I think living in a city is scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then I, I told my dad that since we've been wanting to shift outside, now is the time to do it. And I'm totally in, you know, you can go ahead, take this step. 
and so he did it. And I haven't seen anybody else. Um, he just said that he has given up his, he sold his house. But so till date, I didn't know anybody other than my dad who had actually jumped out of the rat race and given up everything just to, you know, carry forward his passion and let me live a life that I wanted to. Um, there's another um, interesting thing. I was, we were on a trip with my grandparents and all our other cousins um, to the south of India, and one of my friends was carrying these, this book, Tuesdays with Maury. And I liked to read a lot, and I was getting bored in the journey, so I accidentally took the book and I finished reading it. Um, by the end of the book, I was, I think my life had completely changed, taken a new meaning. There was this one sentence in the book uh, that Mitch Album, that I, the author of the book had written, uh, that you ask yourself every night, there's, there should, there's this one spider that sits on your shoulder, and every night before you go to sleep, just tell that spider to ask you that if this was the last day or not, have you lived the way you wanted to live it, like completely. And I think uh, since then, every day, I've been smiling every single day to whoever I see, whichever person on the road, on the street, while I'm traveling, I'm always smiling because some people give me very weird looks, thinking that what is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but some people actually smile back, and it makes my smile grow even bigger. So it's kind of cool that it, um, some people actually smile back, it's nice. And I think that book really, really changed me. It's like my Bible for me. Um, and then there was another movie which is called The Green Beautiful, uh, which is a very different concept, a very differently made filmed movie. Uh, the director of the movie was the writer and the actress in the movie. It's a French movie. Uh, and um, she actually has um, put very, very complex things and very simple statements in that movie. A small example, uh, there's this lady who's from another planet who's come to Earth for some time just to see how the Earthlings are doing. And uh, she meets with this doctor um, and his wife. And the wife is always carrying around a purse and has lots of stuff in it. And this lady who's come from the other planet is really, really curious. So one night she goes to the wife and she's like, uh, can I open your bag and see what's in it? I'm just really curious. What do you, so many people carry around all day long. So she's like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so she opens the purse and she takes out a bundle of, you know, like makeup. And uh, she's like, what do you use this, all of this for? And she's like, nothing, just, you know, to paint your lips, to paint your face. Like, why do you need to do that? And uh, she replies, just to look beautiful. So she's like, why do you need to look beautiful? And she's like, so that people like you. So she's like, so people like you only if you look beautiful. And that was, it, it was such a simple statement, but it had a very, very deep meaning. It touched me um, deeply. Like, I've never given a lot of importance to the way I look, the way I dress. But I think after that movie, I became even more <laughs> simpler and humbler to, you know, what kind of clothes I'm wearing or what I'm going to do today and look today. Because it's more important to be beautiful by heart than just the outside. Um, and um, um, Nisha asked me to share the story of... Uh, uh, when I started, when I was discussing that I didn't want to continue my education in the normal stream, and I just wanted to take a break after my 12th standard, I was uh, teaching kids at a Montessori school, um, just because I like spending time with kids. Uh, and at the end of the journey, then I decided I want to do, do yoga, and then I went to the community um, in Sholai. Um, but during that time, uh, there was like all my uncles and everybody is very highly educated. They think a lot about education and it was very, very difficult for them to digest the fact that I'm never going to study and go in the normal streamline. 
and they always thought, what am I going to do? I'm just going to farm, like work on the farm, and how much am I going to earn? And, you know, it's like family reputation type. So, <laughs> um, they actually uh, stopped talking or respected my decision when I uh, came back from Sholai and I uh, entered this British climate champion um, competition, uh, which is held every year by the British Council. Uh, for individuals who have ideas to ideas or projects that they can work on for a year um, to help stop the climate, you know, the global warming and stuff like that. So I had given my project as this eco-sustainable community where we planted around 10 lakh trees, but only two, 2 lakh have actually survived. Uh, so, yeah, I had submitted that project and they were impressed and I was one of the climate champions. And uh, that journey taught me a lot. I met lots of new people, youngsters, who are doing amazing work throughout India, outside India. And uh, um, I was just thankful that, you know, it's taken a lot of time for me to convince my family, but today they actually, you know, tell me that what you're doing is good. It's actually difficult, but it's good. Uh, so I, I know I've earned that respect, and now they actually love me for what I'm doing which matters a lot to me because I had a very hard time convincing everybody and myself that this was the right thing. And it was not just a ego boost that I was saying that I want to be different and I want to do something different. Um, I would, uh, there's this quote that I read somewhere um, that I used to keep cribbing for new shoes until I saw a man with no feet. Uh, and when the first time I read it, I really, like, all I could think of is everything that I'm thankful for. I couldn't even begin to name everything that I'm thankful for, including sitting here right now with all of you. Um, thank you for being a part of my journey and letting me be a part of yours. And this is actually the first time I'm talking to a group of people who are actually listening to me. It's making me a little nervous, but um, I'm sorry if, if I've bored you or if I've made any mistakes. Uh, but thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And I hope we stay in touch and we all just spread this message as fast.